can you use a 55 inch LG OLED 4K TV as a computer monitor? Well, I took the plunge and I've been using one for the past six months and I thought it was finally time to share my thoughts. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Chris and I make all sorts of videos to do with videography, photography, technology, and much, much more. If you think you'd be interested in that, then please hit that subscribe button. So if you've been following this channel for some time, you might have seen my studio tour where I showcased my monster monitor setup. I'd spent ages getting it just how I liked it with a triple HD monitor setup on top with a 49 inch super ultra wide electric monitor on the table below. This might seem like overkill to some, but I like being able to leave everything I'm working on open as much as possible. I loved this setup, but just after I made this video, I was filming for another project and I knocked over a tripod and the camera on top smashed the electric monitor. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Oh. I was gutted. I started looking for a replacement when I had a thought. A 55 inch 4K TV is roughly the same amount of screen real estate as what I already had. So would it be any different? I started scouring the internet for every video I could find where people were using big TVs as PC monitors, but none of them really had the answers to the questions that I was asking. The only way I was going to know for sure is if I bought one. I'm making this video to share my thoughts on whether using a 55 inch TV is a good solution long term, whether it's good for productivity, gaming and video editing, and whether it's the right choice for you. Okay, so let me start off by saying this is not for everyone. If you're used to a single monitor setup or even dual monitor setup, and you're thinking of making the jump to a huge TV instead, then I would advise against it. If, however, you're always looking for a little bit more screen, then this might be right up your street. So let's talk about some of the concerns I had before I took the plunge. Firstly, is it gonna be too big for the space I wanted to put it in? For me, the answer is no. I have a huge desk and a vast amount of space to mount this TV pretty much anywhere that I wanted to, but it really does dominate the space. So if you're a bit tight on space, then I would consider the smaller version. The next concern I had was, will sitting as close as I do give me headaches? I've heard a few reports of this being an issue, but for me, it has never been a problem. The way in which I use this monitor 99% of the time is more like a large canvas that I can manipulate at will. The only application I actually run in full screen mode is Premiere Pro. The rest of the time I separate the screen out into different zones using an app made by Microsoft called PowerToys. I'll pop a link in the video description to a video that I made recently about using PowerToys on this very screen. As you can see, I've reinstated two of my older screens, but these are mainly used for when I'm live streaming so I can look in the direction of the camera, but also have the show notes or controls to hand if needed. Next, I was worried I was gonna get screen burn. I have my computer on most of the day and my concern was that I didn't wanna spend a thousand pounds plus on a TV that I would effectively damage if it stayed on the same app too long. I've tried to manage this by always turning off the TV when I'm not using it, turned off the taskbar and removed any icons from the desktop. I do still spend hours and hours within Premiere with the same icons being in the same place on the screen, but so far, so good. Lastly, and something I was really worried about, does it look any good this close up? I'm sat about two and a half feet away from the screen most of the time, and I was scared that once it was mounted, I was gonna be disappointed in the quality. In preparation, I tried sitting in front of another 4K TV at the same distance to get a feeling of what it was actually going to be like, and it made me feel sick. That TV was only a 42-inch Samsung, but I'm happy to report that with this TV, it isn't an issue for me at all. 
The screen looks as sharp, if not sharper than my old monitors, and it really is just like using one huge PC monitor. Let's talk about productivity. Is it any good? Well, like I said before, I use this screen as a massive canvas, like a wall of screen which I can manipulate. Using Power Toys Fancy Zones turns it into a productivity monster. I can be browsing the internet, watching a YouTube video, writing a script, talking to my friends on Discord and checking the price of Bitcoin with screen to spare. It is truly a wonderful experience. It does take some setting up and getting used to, but once you hit that sweet spot, it'll be hard for you to use anything else. That's what I find for me anyway. So how is this TV for gaming on a PC? I've tried several games on this TV and sitting this close is not a pleasant experience if they're in full screen. As I was so used to gaming on my 49 inch ultra wide, I'm most comfortable running the games in a 32 by nine aspect ratio. This works really well when I have other apps open above. Games in full screen literally made me feel ill. Some games are just not optimized for using a screen this big. Battlefield 5 was one such game that didn't give me a wide enough field of view. If I was four or five feet away from the screen, it would have been absolutely fine, but two and a half feet is just far too close. If you plan to game on a TV this big, either sit further away from it or put the game in windowed mode and you won't have any issues. On the subject of latency, honestly, I don't notice a difference between this and my super ultra wide when I'm in the game mode on the TV. I'm not gonna deep dive into this because for me, it really isn't an issue. If you're planning to use this TV exclusively for gaming, then I suggest you watch the Linus Tech Tips videos instead. I have noticed that my graphics card does struggle a little bit if I try and play games on the higher settings. Just for your reference, I have the GTX 1070 and I think I'm pushing it to the max to run both this 4K display and the two HD displays. I think anything under a GTX 1070 will struggle to perform as you would like with this TV. Let's move on to video editing. Honestly, video editing on this TV is the best experience I've ever had. One of my main considerations when looking at a new monitor was color accuracy. My Electric 49 inch was all over the place even after calibration when it came to color, which made it incredibly hard to grade properly. The LG series is one of the most color accurate screens you can get out of the box. You see it being used on very high end productions for this very reason. Also, because I shoot a lot of 4K watching the footage back, it looks insane. I was never really tempted by 4K until I was looking for a replacement, but now I have one, there is no way I could ever go back to editing on a HD display. There is a downside to this though. HD footage really doesn't look very good on this screen, as you would expect, which makes me want to shoot exclusively in 4K, meaning at some point I would need to upgrade all of my cameras. The workflow is also excellent. It's like having two 49 inch super ultra wides, one on top of another, meaning you can have everything you want open at the same time. Gone are the days of having to switch between different workspaces in Premiere Pro. Photo editing in Lightroom is also ridiculously good. I shoot most of my photography on a Sony a7R II and the 48 megapixel images are breathtaking on this display. Working in any Adobe program is a joy. Whether you're a graphic designer, an illustrator, video editor, or photographer, you're gonna have a great visual experience using this TV as a monitor. So let's talk about some of the negatives. <sighs> when I'm sat in front of this monitor, the top corners aren't really at the right angle. It's hard to describe what I mean. When I had my triple monitor set up, I have the left and the right monitor angled into me, which made reading text and navigating really quite easy. With the 55 inch TVs, those corners are obviously facing straight out, which just makes it a little tricky. Next, this TV is heavy. I just about managed to mount it on a wall by myself, but it was a real struggle. I would advise if you're planning to mount it anywhere, definitely get somebody else to help you. It was probably a bit dumb of me trying to mount this 1200 pound TV on a wall by myself. Finally, price. I just mentioned that this is a 1200 pound TV and it is a very expensive solution. But it is a lot of screen for your money. 
I honestly do think it's worth it. Huge screen real estate, great quality images and very colour accurate. If you're looking to buy one of these, think of it more as an investment. It's going to last a really long time and I expect in five years time I'll still be using the very same screen. Like I said at the very beginning of this video, this solution is not for everyone, but it definitely works how I was expecting it to with very few drawbacks. If you're right on the verge of buying one, but you just need someone to reassure you that it's a good idea, then please take my recommendation as reassurance and give it a try for yourself. I think it'll probably blow your mind. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, then please consider hitting that subscribe button, liking the video, and if you have any questions at all, either pop them in the comment section below or join my Facebook group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again really soon.